What's up guys, it's Plisken Boy here, and today I'm going to do a little bit of a smaller side project video. I'm going to try to answer one of the age-old questions. Olympia or M14? Okay, so before I get into the specifics of my findings, let me lay down the ground rules that I set for myself going through with these experiments. I could only use the Olympia or respectively M14 based on which one I was using for the experiment. The knife and grenades were allowed, however I was not allowed to buy any other guns or use any of the perks or use any of the drops including like nuke or insta-kill that would make the game easier. So the idea was to keep it as controlled as possible and as focused as possible on both the Olympia and M14 to see their merit as weapons on their own. So now that you guys have an idea of how I went about this, let's go ahead and look at how the Olympia did. So right off the bat, the first thing that I did was get the Olympia off the wall so that the experiment would immediately be focused on the results it would produce. So after knifing my way through round one, I immediately was exposed to the Olympia's power within the earlier rounds. One shot, one kill, making the reloads that were incredibly slow not that much of a problem. And since none of the zombies were running yet, I could just simply wait for them to stumble into single file lines and tear them apart. I have to say, one of the greatest benefits with the Olympia is how easy it is to conserve ammo. While I did make a couple trips going back and forth to buy more just to stay stocked, I never really had the fear of running out as each individual shot had so much power behind it, I didn't really feel the need to spam yet, and this was getting closer to round 4 and 5. Round 4 is when I began to have issues with the Olympia, as it would take two or more shots at certain distances to kill one single zombie. Therefore, I was pushed out of the beginning room, and I had to start relying on creating space between the zombies and I. I found that I could get around this decrease in damage by controlling different small rooms. For example, this stairway area provided me ample space to back out and also go forward on the offensive creating a nice balance back and forth between me and the zombies. Coming into round 5, I started to realize that I could not ignore the damage decrease and I had to stay extremely mobile and more so on the defensive. My offensive capabilities kept on going under as I would put two rounds into a zombie and have them still be there standing. So my grenades really came into play here. Once again, I found myself being swarmed and had to move further and further towards the stage just to stay alive. It was around this point that I found myself running away more so than I found myself shooting. I started to see the negative aspects of the Olympia as putting shots into a zombie took so much time, which detracted from my possibilities of getting away from the oncoming swarm. By round 6, I had to make sure there was at least 30 feet of space between me and a zombie if I wanted to stop and shoot one. Because honestly, if not, they would catch up to me and give me a good old slap on the back. Realizing that I needed to open the map up otherwise I was going to die, it was already too late as zombies were in all directions and I really had no offensive capabilities. So they swarmed me, beat me into a corner, and the Olympia experiment ended at round 6. Going into the M14 experiment, I immediately ran upstairs and again knifed my way through round 1. During rounds 2 and 3, I barely had to go through 2 rounds to put down one single zombie, so I was zooming across the map to all the different doors with no issues. Like the Olympia, in round 4, the damage drop off is substantial and I had to put almost an entire mag into a single zombie to take them down. However, I didn't have as much trouble with the Olympia, A, because I could hit them from further away and the damage would stay consistent, B, because the bullets would tear through one zombie and also damage the other, and C, the reloads were a lot faster. Which really helped with the M14's unrealistic depiction of ammo capacity. Normal M14s would hold 20 rounds, however in this game here, you only get 8 per mag, so those quick reloads are essential. Now round 5 was very similar to round 4. I had the same amount of trouble but I found that by continuously opening doors and keeping space between the zombies and I, I was able to pelt through them with a couple mags, stay mobile, stay fast. 
I just had to go back and forth to pick up ammo quite often. Unlike the Olympia, the M14 will really chew through ammo because of the little damage that it does once you get a little further. However, by using the rape train strategy, I was able to get through the round, not with ease, but it felt possible, unlike with the Olympia. And a big part of that had to do with the fact that I could maintain distance from the zombies, where with the Olympia, I had to get up close. Skipping forward to round 7, after I did a ton of ammo runs back and forth while rape training, I got dogs. Now, dogs usually is the part where I die in zombies if I don't have a good gun. I'd say I'm an average player and I'm sure there's people that can handle dogs really well. However, I really struggled, but the M14, once again, really prevailed just because I could pelt out those rounds fast and at a distance. At this point in time, part of me truly believed that I was going to be able to get to round 10 with the M14. However, this is when the game started stepping it up, having the zombies move faster, having them move in groups, sending those obnoxious exploding crawlers, and I started to get the feeling that even the M14 with all of its utility can only go so far. And I was totally right, after rape training for what felt like an eternity, only pelting down maybe one zombie if I was lucky with every couple mags, I got cornered, a crawler got me from behind, and the M14 just didn't have the damage to get me out of a sticky situation. So at round 8, the M14 failed. And with that, the old schoolyard debate is settled. The M14 stands head and shoulders over the Olympia for its versatility, extended damage at ranges, the fast way you can just keep on pelting shots. It's still nothing like the MP40, the Galil, or the Thundergun, the Raygun. However, if you're going to pick up one of these starter weapons in the earlier rounds, just to make sure that you're not relying too handily on your 1911, the M14 is definitely the better choice. What do you guys think? Have you tested this out and realized that the Olympia is actually better and I just used it the wrong way? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.